Is this the Tea House podcast? Good evening once again, tea baggers. Thank you for joining us for episode 28. And this marks I think our biggest episode. We're joined by the big fella himself, Blake Pavey. And Blake Pavey is a world f- phenomenon stand-up comedian. Australia's number one stand-up. He's taken over Carl Barron very shortly. Yeah, you've probably seen him around. He's, get, he's getting pretty big these days. Uh, viral TikToker. And uh, we also dive into how he's suffering from cystic fibrosis, fibrosis which is a really interesting talk. Um, the episode was actually fucking very classic. Yeah, you, you like this one, T-Baggers. You will enjoy this one, so if I can get tucked in. And just another shout-out as well. Give us a uh, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. The YouTubes. What, oh, YouTube. Yeah. Whatever else we've got. Not a lot of shit that I... We've got a lot of shit. We, don't even, we have fucking Twitter, but we've never even touched it, really. Trust me, mate. Twitter, we're going to be blown on Twitter very shortly. Yeah, when we figure out how to fucking use it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> and also, we mentioned a few episodes ago we have some hats coming and how fucking excited we've actually ordered the hats so they'll be coming very very soon and they're gangster as fuck too so you'd be wanting to jump on exactly if you want to pick up birds fucking chuck that hat on (laughs) it'll fucking and if you don't put them on too can't because just as good it'll do both ways for you i can guarantee yeah yeah Yeah. guaranteed no but uh now let's bring blake in blake Howdy. Howdy. How are you, mate? Good. Very well. Thank you for having me. No worries. Thank you for having us in your uh, humble abode. Oh, mate, the fucking pad. The pad. The big fella's pad, man. It's fucking <laughs> wild, I'm telling you right now. Oh, mate, it's going off. Stripper pole set up over there. Yep. You just can't see it, but <laughs> it's there. It's all decked out. <laughs> it's actually good. I kind of love when apartments like this. Oh, yeah. I just want to quickly note the uh, washing machines on the balcony, not plugged in, just yeah. for a bit of air drying. Mate, very washing. Pro- very professional setup we got so far. It's very good. How do you actually wash your clothes? Uh, I haven't actually done it yet. Like <laughs> I'm only a week in, so I'll have to like set up a day. Uh, a few weeks left. Yeah, you, exactly. Right. Doing yeah. the inside out rewear yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Respect that, bro. <laughs> set the hustle. <laughs> yeah. On that note, how has it been since uh, you told me just just before a week and a half you've been in Melbourne? For Pretty much, yeah. Moved in last Wednesday. So yeah, just sort of getting set up. Yep. Yeah, yeah, fucking don't know what to do with myself. I just need a job. Yeah. I need to structure my life around something because I'm just spending all day at home just doing fuck all. Yeah. How right. is it? Like, because me and Blake were talking, you were from country New South Wales, is that right? Yeah, I've sort of uh, like three hours uh, north of Melbourne, just right on the border of New South Wales and Victoria. Yeah. In a little town called Corowa. But, um, but yeah, just like real, real country town. Like I think 6,000 people live there or something like that. So yeah. Fucking big change, man. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically Victoria. It's borderline Victoria. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Literally everything, what, north of Bendigo? Hey. Everything north of Bendigo is what? 6,000 people at max population. Yeah. Per city, <laughs> per town. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, well, it is basically Victoria. We get all the Victorian news and shit like that. Nobody follows rugby. Yeah. Oh, really? Like that. Yeah, no, nah, there's like, it's mostly an AFL town and then just like a couple of little rugby fans on the side, but like, yeah, yeah big AFL. So it's basically Victoria. Are you close to the border? Yeah. Like Only three hours away. It must be fucking pretty close. Yeah. Right, right on the border. Like, um, I think like where my old house was like fucking, you go two streets up and you're at the, at the river. Oh really? Yeah. That's, so like, that's always good. You would have got my joke before. That's why I said borderline Victoria. Oh, yeah, right, fucking miss that time, one, man. Next well time, bro. Missed right. it. Always miss those. It's all right. Blake missed it too. It's all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so your main reason, was your main reason actually coming to Melbourne, was it to pursue com- comedy or was it just a general yeah, life change? Pretty much. Oh, a bit of both, really. Like I've been living, like I'm the only person in my family who was like born in like country. Like I've got a lot of family who was like, here primarily, but like I'm the only real local in the family. So like I just needed to get out of the country after living there for like 18, 19 years. Yeah. But um, but yeah, comedy is like the biggest thing that I want to sort of delve into. Either that, like doing, doing stand up and all that. And then uh, like a little bit of acting as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I think on the podcast we just listened to on the way up here, you wanted to, you were talking about moving to America, yeah, the US. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. Like, I wouldn't ever go there permanently because, um, just like it's not the not my vibe anymore. Like a couple of years ago, I, like really wanted to go there over 
like a couple of years um, and just stay there as long as I could, like over in New York and shit. But just, I don't know, after last year, it's just uh, like the last place I want to be. Yeah, 100%. Or you get shot as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <Either> <laughs> one. Catch COVID or get shot. You've yeah. got fucking two options. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be there for until until the country levels out a bit. Yeah. People are on the same side again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah literally. Yeah, after the next fucking civil war ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what, oh. what made you want to start getting into like comedy obviously you must be pretty stemmed from comedy you've been doing tiktok comedy for like yeah. a fair while 2019 yeah, yeah sort of like late 2019 so i would have been around 17 at the time when it all sort of started but i know it was sort of like when i was 12 years old like i knew i wanted to get into like like entertainment and comedy in some sense but yeah. like living in the country there's just no no options for it so i was just going to go to uni for like sports management or something like that, or do kind like... Kind of PE teacher. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, That's it's just fucking... Yeah, I've just become like... I've just put that, all that shit into my TikTok now, like all the yeah. characters and shit, but... um, You actually have like the, the PE teacher and stuff, is that right? Oh, I've done like one PE teacher, but like I feel like everyone does a teacher character these days. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I've, I seen wanna, I've seen yeah, a few. Yeah, so yeah. I don't want to like over flood the market, but like <laughs> give me a couple of fucking months when I run out of all my ideas and then I'll get one going, but... um. <laughs> But yeah, like ever since I was 12, I wanted to like, I knew I wanted to get into comedy, but like there was just no pathway for it until I just stumbled across this. Yeah. Yep. So did you ever explore it at all? Like at home and stuff? Not really. Like I sort of looked at a few things. Like there was like, my brother went to like a art school, like in South Bank that did like acting as well. And I was going to, I was thinking about going there at least auditioning, but I just didn't want to, like I was in year 10 at the time. So I was like too like close knit with all my mates that I already had. So I was just like, I'll finish up school and then maybe think about it. And then year 11 hit and then, yeah, all these doors have opened. What yeah. kind of acting would you want to get into? Um, well, I'd probably go into comedy first just to like sort of step into it. But like if I was to go into some dramatic stuff, I would. But fucking, I just need to learn how to make myself cry <laughs> <and> <laughs> like that because I cannot do that for the life of me. I'll just go on Neighbours. Oh, kind of, where yeah. everyone's like all home and away or something. Yeah. Like, tell you what, dude, just put a Lego out and step on it every every scene you're yeah. <laughs> No, just use the um Joey from Friends technique. Just put your hands in your pocket and then pull your pubes out. And that's how <laughs> that's what he said. That's how you make yourself cry. Really? Oh, yeah. Shit. That oh, would God. work too. That's yeah. genius. Yeah. Joey Tribbiani, mate. Make Fair, yeah, but imagine imagine just seeing his pocket fucking <laughs> he's just fucking ripping it. And just like Yeah, Joey, what are you doing? Nothing, man. <laughs> it's a wide shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, those jeans are tight, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually um I don't know if I told you, Blake. I actually haven't. Do you watch Friends? Um, I did like a little bit like back in the day, but it was never I think I missed the train. Yeah. So I didn't, I've never been into it. Yeah. Like I've seen a couple episodes here and there, but I've I went, never I went to New York a couple of years back. And I went to like the fountain, like that they had the intro. It's fucking shit house. It's like, <laughs> it's so small compared to what it looks like on TV. Like yeah, it was yeah. the most disappointing thing ever. <laughs> Just fucking huge let down. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the episode where Ross has taken the couch upstairs and he's like yelling pivot? No. Nah. Uh, well, no, see, I think I'll, I've never watched a full episode, just like little bits here yeah. and there flicking through the channel. I reckon Blake lived that when he was moving these up. Oh, yeah. Literally, <laughs> long story short, I'm actually going to get that as a tattoo on my arm. Oh, that's the way. Pivot with a couch on my arm. You have to watch Friends. Yeah, yeah, you're looking I at me like that's a weird off. fucking... I was scrolling through Tinder and some chick had in her bio, if you don't know what pivot means, then we can't be friends. Now I know. <laughs> there you go, dude. Yeah. I'm, so I just replied back. Up. I was like, um, fucking basketball. I don't know. But <laughs> now I can text her. I'll be like, friends, <laughs> yeah. go on a date with me. <laughs> it was like four years ago. Like yeah. <laughs> left unread. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> How is the TikTok clout for Tinder? Uh, yeah, it's all, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Just pull out the old clout card when I'm at the club. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wait, that, that, do a TikTok dance with me, Blake. <laughs> oh, no. I actually hope not. That would fucking... Fu oh, that would infuriate me, I reckon. I'd be like, no. I don't, I don't, I don't really ever get asked to do like dances and shit like that, but people come up to me and they're like, do the dad voice. And like, I'm fucking doing it 24 seven, mate. Like, it's just my real voice, but they're like, oh, do it, do it, do it. It's like everybody's become the fucking do the raw kid from Shrek. Dude, I was actually on the, like, before we came up, we were watching a podcast. And I was like, I wonder if Blake actually sounds like that in real life. Like, yeah. On your podcast. Yeah. And I was like, you know, sometimes, because yeah. I, I used to put on a voice in early podcasts, didn't I? Yeah, sort I didn't, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't actually realize that I did it, but I like changed my voice. I don't yeah. know if it was like a coping technique or... Just trying to sound too professional. Yeah. Yeah, too professional. I wasn't like my actual self. Yeah. 
not that you you sounded like your actual self. But yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I was wondering <laughs> if it was actually your voice. Yeah. You actually do have a classic, just normal voice. Yeah, yeah. no, it's just like growing up in the country, like for <laughs> all my life, that's, this is the result of it. Yeah. So yeah, because most people think I'm from like Melbourne, Sydney originally. So like nobody actually thinks this is like my real voice. Yeah. But yeah. yeah this is the product. <laughs> that's gold. Um, Because I reckon you've probably got the best pack a day 40 year old mum smoker voice i've ever heard oh, yeah, it in my a, life it took a lot of practice yeah i, I can't do those videos for too long because it just wrecks my throat. voice at the end of shooting but um dude i actually blake showed me the video and i was like holy fuck i was like you sound like them people that get cancer in their throat and have to fucking hold up yeah hey, like you literally sound like 80 percent of my aunties it's good <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good all right it. no it's funny because like that's where a lot of your comedy stems from too is like just general everyday australian sort of stuff like i've even like even like some of your like your footy your footy coach yeah. stuff fucking just got me hard. Yeah. Like your mate's dad, that was the footy coach. Like yeah. all of it just like relates, I reckon, which is what is fucking like makes you like real what's it called? Um just a likable guy. Like yeah. relatable. Oh, I hope Rel- so. relatable is what I was yeah. trying. Yeah, relatable. Yeah, I just sort of like take little bits and pieces from my life and then just put them online and yeah, yeah. that's what I've found works best i think yeah 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 I find, are you really good at because i find it really hard skill to do like try and like take away real things and like make them funny in a yeah. way and like that's what you're sort of like doing i, I like yeah 100 percent. yeah how do you come up with you said before like when you run out of ideas you've like we lurked i lurked your tiktok because i was like i oh, wonder how long you've been doing it for that's how we found out you have a fucking ton and they're all them what do you call them pov yeah pov yeah, type yeah, yeah. videos yep how do you consistently keep coming up with these fucking ideas? I don't know. I think, I think they sort of just like come like, and then like if I see something like out on the street or something or like something my dad says, I'll like try to like wrap that up and like make a video out of that and sort of packages up into like one sort of big thing. But yeah, they just, they come from a whole heap of different places. Like whether that be family, friends or just like random like other shit. But yeah. Has your dad ever caught you having a wake? Uh, not having a wank, but I think I reckon he's caught me watching porn at least once when I was like thirteen. Really, I've yeah. never been caught doing that. Do I don't I think I've been caught doing the whole, like the whole yeah. spastic throwing the blanket over yeah. the top of yourself sort of moment when you when you've been caught. You know, and like the yeah you, yeah yeah. Because you, you know how your spine is, you're jerking off, senses are tingling when you fucking you just you like know you're like yeah like, you hear like a noise you're like, and then you're like <laughs> pause the video, minimize <laughs> it. <laughs> No, we're good. Come back <laughs> up. <laughs> but then, then sometimes they just get you off guard. You're like, it's a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stop now. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop, baby. Yeah, eye contact. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just joking. No, what's the one how it's like, I don't know, it's called like some sort of trick, but it's like when you're mid-orgasm and you just yell out mum's name or some <laughs> shit. And it's now, it's like a speed run to get to the end. Oh, no. <laughs> like a challenge. That's yeah. a TikTok challenge. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah imagine that. Uh, I've been caught having sex before by my nana. <laughs> And I just laid on top of her and just <laughs> it. I just literally said we're just cuddling. Like, that's fair enough. Yeah. I don't think she, I don't know. If she had the nana, she's a viber. <laughs> she's a viber, is she? She's a vibe ski. <laughs> oh, shit. Who, like, where would you say, like, your comedy sort of stems from? Like, who, who, like, who growing up were you like, fuck, I like him. He's like, he's like the sort of comedy I'd like to do. Yeah. Or like, I don't know. It's not really one specific person. I, I mean, I grew up watching a lot of Carl Barron stand up. Like he's like the peak Aussie stand up oh, icon to pure. me. But I like, yeah, it came from like just watching like the Melbourne Comedy Festival gala and shit growing up. Like I don't know half the comedians' names, but like I'd hear someone swear and just think that's the funniest thing in the world. Like so, I was like, yeah, I want to do that one day. Yeah. But um, yeah, they come from like a heap of different places. I guess like a lot of actors, like that's probably like primarily over stand up, especially in younger years. But like people like Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, all those type of people really were sort of like because I wanted to get into acting primarily first, and then I realised how much I like stand up. But yep. um, but yeah, most of my stand up icons have sort of come out over the past couple of years like daniel sloss who i'm seeing tonight yeah and then like um anthony jesmick and all those type of guys like they've been really really good for me yeah yep. for sure and you said you had your first stand-up show six weeks ago yeah six seven weeks ago i just did like a little shitty open mic in adelaide just to like is that where you rotate like every couple of minutes or five minutes or yeah something? there was like the setup was like they'd have like groups of like five so they'd do like and each person does does like five minutes each and then they like bring the next group on and all that sort of stuff. So I was like 
I think the show went for like two hours and I was like one of the last people to actually go on. So I was just shitting myself for like 40 minutes waiting to go up. But Can't yeah. even enjoy the show. You're just like yeah. sweating. Like, yeah. It's coming. <laughs> did you like write a heaps of, heaps of shit for it? Like, Yeah, I did. I like, I wish I was quick witted like a lot of other comedians, like people with crowd work, like that's like the best sort of stand up, but I just mm. can't do it yet. Yeah. So I like, I need every beat like in my acts written up, but like I was just shitting myself. So like even that got thrown out the window, like the whole flow of it was just ruined. Yeah. So in, in other words, Blake's saying definitely heckle him at his shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely heckle him. <laughs> well, Cody Jones, who we had previously on, um, he said, people think they're going to jump into comedy and just be good at it. Yeah. It's like, just like one of those things. It takes years. Like, yeah, to be. exactly. And that's sort of what he, th like he even said that, like he thought he was just going to go in. Like his first show, he said, cause it was like all his best material, lots of months of sort of like planning and stuff. He's like, yes, like that was a really good show and stuff. But then he's like, oh, the next one. And then that's the one that was bad. And he was sort of like, oh, why am I doing this? Blah, 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 blah. But then he's like, oh yeah. How, why would I, why would I be good? What, yeah. do I just deserve to be good at something second yeah, time exactly. I've ever tried it yeah it's like one of the things like as the more time you've got on stage the better you're gonna get like yeah. fucking like the best blokes have done like 10 20 thousand hours of stand up like through throughout like 20 years so like I'm definitely not expecting to be any good at it for at least the first I'm not expecting to be comfortable on stage for at least the first like year or two at least yeah, yeah. How did you go on your first show? Like, it was because Cody said that when it was his first show, he didn't do too bad because he was just like it was fucking ages of prep before he went on for his yeah. first show. How did you go there? Yeah, mine went. Mine didn't go as bad as I thought it would. It still went bad, but like <laughs> I, it was wasn't the complete like amount of dog shit that I thought it was going to be. But like the thing was like you had to do five minutes and then like they'd flash a light in your face at like four and a half minutes and then another light at five. But I just had tunnel vision. So I like could not see a thing and I didn't realise my light had flashed a fuck ton of times. Mm. So I ended up doing like eight, nine minutes of just like <laughs> rambling. And then it was like the Oscars. They just started playing music <laughs> and sort of got me off stage. And I was like, fuck, I didn't even finish like the set that I wanted to do. Oh, bullshit. The curtains yeah. just closed like yeah. halfway through a conversation, <laughs> like a joke or yeah. something. Yeah, that, that was bad. Yeah, really bad. <laughs> Did oh. you get any like, when you like told a joke and just no one laughed? Yeah. Yeah, I had a few of those. Yeah. Oh, no, that would just crush me. I yeah. I'd be like, like tough ground boys. It would, it would hurt, but it's part of the, part yeah. of the job. It's like the hardest thing to do is like bomb and then just, you have to stay in the bit. Yeah. yeah. But like, it's just so hard to not just like try to move on from it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you stick to it, they, you, the audience usually comes around. Yeah. Yeah. Was your other shows have been pretty good? Like, have you gotten better or? Yeah, they've been like a little bit better just because they've been like pretty small crowds. But um, yeah, I'm just sort of taking it by year and just trying to get better each, each show. Yep. yep. Shit. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. So how is it being, in your own words, a C-grade celebrity? Oh, I love it. It's so good. Yeah. Especially come, coming out of school. Like, I just finished year 12 last year. Like, you get, like, peak status at school about it. Like, yeah. that's probably the best bit. But, like, yeah, just the little perks, like, going out clubbing, like, not paying for a drink and all that sort of stuff, that's pretty good. So, really? so you're basically like a girl. Like, Yeah, you to go I love it. Do the girls buy you drinks? drinks? No, nah, well, um, they're blokes usually, aren't they? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, um, I, I love you, bro. I'll buy you a drink, yeah, bro. That's legit. <laughs> all it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fair. If I seen you randomly on the street, I'd be like, "Fuck, I'm buying that kind of drink." <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. You'd be like, "Fuck yeah." Did we just talk about it on the podcast or off air about uh, how's it going with the chicks? Did we talk about that on the podcast? I think we just. Yeah, I think we went into it a little bit on Tinder, yeah. but that was about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. So I seen your Instagram stories the other day and it was like you with girls and stuff. How Does that actually work or what? Like, oh, I, I don't know if you don't want to dive into it. Mate, you're trying to give up the secrets on there? Yeah. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, bro? Yeah, no, it's all right. Like, um, I mean, before TikTok, I definitely wouldn't call myself a ladies man <laughs> in any sense of the word, but yeah, it fucking helps. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, just- uh, You're lying. Huh? I said you're lying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, um, yeah. Definitely, once you sort of venture out of the country, like, because there's not a lot of options in Corowa, New South Wales, <laughs> to really, uh, to really get your sex life up and running. But um, yeah, once you move out, it's, uh, you know, it works wonders. Yeah, yeah. I imagine <laughs> you were pretty lucky, and I don't know if there's, have you have you deleted many TikTok videos? Uh, I've deleted like a few old ones that I just look at now. I'm like, this is so shit. And then like, there's obviously a few that are going to get taken down for like community guideline violations and all that sort of stuff. But 
on the whole, I don't really delete too many. Yeah. Because your second video has like 1 million views. Yeah. Was that legitimately your second video? Yeah, that was like, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, it took me like my mates, because I was like one of the blokes, like when TikTok was first sort of popping off in like mid-2019, I was like, nah, this is shit. Like nobody likes this app. Yeah, it's going to die in like a year's time. And then I finally got it and I was like, yeah, shit, this is pretty good, eh? <laughs> yeah. And then like, yeah, second video I made got a million views and my mates were so pissed off with me because they'd been trying to do it for like like three and a half months, just yeah. make a viral video. And then I just mm. come in and yeah. It's fucking clean up, man. Yeah. The boys are trying to throw headbutts to you at lunchtime. Yeah. And shit. Like, Fuck this cunt. How the many fuck? How many followers have you got now? Uh, just over 650k, I think. Yeah. Fuck. Do you put that like on your resume and stuff? Yeah, it is. On, <laughs> yeah. It is on the resume is for that? like the um like the Marketing. social media managing nah. jobs I've been trying to do. I, That's fair enough. Yeah, but I just like try to market it really professionally. Like, yeah, I've just been trying to grow like really organic sort of like numbers in terms of all the marketing and all that shit. And then, yeah, a couple have fallen for it. So like it's landed me a few interviews. But yeah. To be honest, it is it is actually a good thing. I would generally yeah. do that myself. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Well, I think it's better than going to like uni to study a marketing degree just and have no evidence of like actually, of being, actually being good at it. Yeah, like yeah, that's been the hardest thing. Like people prefer a piece of paper over like experience, yeah. which I've, which has sort of given me the shits because I don't want to go to uni. Yeah, because I just don't want to like pay it off for the next thirty years of my life. Oh, it's the biggest gronk stuff. Oh, it's yeah, like, it's just silly, even like yeah, like because I, I like my partner. She did like what one year of school, and it was like fifty thousand. Like her hex is like fifty thousand as it is, and I was like, huh? Yeah, yeah. My sister's like she's my older sister. She's about thirty uh, one this year. She's still paying it off, and she graduated fucking years ago. Like, and that was just for, like, a teaching degree. So, it's, like, it's fucked. Yeah. Yuck. That actually stems me on to, since we're talking about uni, I wanted to bring up this classic lie that I told to Blake this morning. So funny. Oh, yeah. yeah God. Uh, I would say this is a white lie. <laughs> a little white lie. So, talking about uni. So, I thought I wanted to be a school teacher, like, two years ago. Yeah. And I got into uni for it. And two weeks in. No, actually, sorry. I was working a full-time job first. And I hated it. So I was like, oh, I'm starting uni. I can only do like two or three days a week. And they're like, yeah, cool. I went to uni for two weeks. I was like, that's same for me. And then dropped out and still told them, like never told them. So yeah. I was just, and then like literally I got it, my next job in August. So from like February, March to August, yeah. I literally lied every week <laughs> that I was at uni yeah. to my boss. And then when I like left, I was like, yeah, I got this new job. She's like, oh, what about uni? And I was like, I don't know. I'll just see what happens, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And then, uh, yeah, they still don't know. So hopefully they don't watch the podcast. They're like, that fucking dog. <laughs> that dog can't yeah. stitch us up hard. Sure, they wouldn't care. Bygones be bygones, surely. Yeah. yeah. How long ago was this, did you say? Like, it was like two years ago. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, they'd be over it now. Yeah. Like, surely. Have, have to be. be. Yeah. Mm. Fuck it. They'll be like, fuck, that were the worst years of my life. Like, they were like, <laughs> oh, it drove me into depression that year. Had an eating disorder because all because of Lincoln Rogers. <laughs> I literally was like, oh, uh, yeah, I got a new job on the Friday. And I was like, yeah, they want me to start on the Monday. Oh. I actually stitched them up pretty hard. I was working there for like two years too. <laughs> that was pretty dog, isn't it? Now that I think about it. It says a bit about your character, but yeah. I fucking uh, well, hated the job though. Yeah. It was so shit. Oh, that makes it all right. It was all right, actually. <laughs> What's your biggest white lie, mate? Fuck. Do you have any? I don't know. You put me on the spot here. <laughs> Blake, do you have any? Blake? Other Blake? Yeah, well, I had... Um, I got... Um, fuck, probably can't even see it on camera, but I've got this um, like <laughs> shitty pussy ass biker tattoo... It's just like a little snake. So I told my parents that it was just like a drunk tattoo, which is like not a lie in itself. But what they don't know is that I got it at like 3 a.m. matching with a Tinder match that I'd met like four and a half hours previously. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, like a date thing. Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, because we were like a little bit blind. Yeah. And we're, and then she said as a joke, oh, let's go get tattoos. And I was like, yeah, right on. <laughs> And I'm scared, um, but okay. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah. No, like, let's get the Riverdale biker tattoo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what it actually looks like? It looks like the Harry Potter Slytherin snake. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna try pass it off as. If people like, if I don't want to tell them, I got it with a Tinder match at 3 a.m. I'm gonna be like, no, I'm just a fucking Slytherin mate. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to respect the fandom. Did she get the snake as well? Yeah, she did. But she got it in a smart spot where nobody can see. She got it on like a lower, like hip, like near her bum. Yeah, yeah. But I'm a dickhead and got it on my wrist. <laughs> that's all right. Me and my mates did the same thing and they they got all theirs on their ankle yeah. and i got this on me <laughs> the shark is straight on the hand 
Just for everyone to see it. They love it though. It's good. It's a good conversation starter. <laughs> you don't regret it at all? No. Nah. Yeah. I've got a couple of backyard jobs too. I don't regret it. It's delay. Yeah, no, I do regret this one. Yeah. I do regret <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you actually do regret it. Do you not like it? No, nah, no, nah, not really. <laughs> I want to get like other stuff like sort of in the same area. And I woke up the next day, I was like, oh, well, I'll fuck that up, haven't I? Um, no, nah, you can still get stuff. Yeah. Cover it up, mate. What made you get the snake? Like, what was the... Oh, she picked it. <laughs> we walked into the tat shop and I was like, fuck, what do we even want? And she was like, oh, I don't know. So she just went on to Google and then just picked a snake. It was probably something she'd been wanting for ages as well. <laughs> do you still talk to her? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's <not good. laughs> <laughs> oh fuck that's actually classic yeah no, i think i've spoken to her once since the uh since the incident oh so like not even like <laughs> so like it wasn't like it wasn't like they even spoke really since then they just sort of just yeah how'd yeah. the date go after the tattoo shop you're like oh well <laughs> see you later <laughs> that it, was the date yeah yeah no it went all right after that yeah <laughs> sometimes silence speaks a lot though yeah S- it says a lot of words I reckon, <laughs> yeah. you know? oh that's actually that good holy shit Fuck, that's actually funny. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. With, like, TikTok, do you have any influences that influence you? And have you, like, met other people from TikTok through TikTok? If that yeah, makes I've sense? met a few. Um, I mean, living in the country, especially last year, I couldn't really go anywhere. But, um, but yeah, I've met, like, a few people who have got, like, Instagram followings primarily. And, um, like, other TikTokers like Liam Dowling and all that sort of stuff. That's who I've sort of been hanging around. Because yeah. um, I've noticed a lot of people, like, hang around. It's like school. They like hang around in little circles. So there'll be like the comedy video makers, then like the shitty public prank video. Uh, like people, they all hang around together. And then like there's the models and dancers and shit like that. So yeah, mostly like people who do comedy, um, like the same sort of videos as me. That's who I've been. You click. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Content clickers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when are you going to rent out like a mansion together? Oh, oh fuck I nearly fell into that trap like a year and a half ago like there was this I got invited to this like TikToker party oh really yeah and I was just going for like the piss up yeah, yeah. and then um sort of during like the middle of the day they were like yeah we're gonna brand this as like an Aussie hype house and I was like you're fucking joking <laughs> <laughs> and it was not good it was sort of like right before the pandemic hit I think I think it was around that time so everybody could still go everywhere and this was like start of my sort of like like starting to ride the tiktok wave so i was at like hundred thousand followers or something like that yeah, and yeah. um they're like yeah just come we're just gonna all hang out and then just like have a party all that sort of stuff so i was like sweet because like i'd only been going to like pubs and shit like yeah, that yeah. in Corowa. so i was like yeah fucking big tiktoker party fuck yeah, yeah that sounds gangster yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounded gangster. And then I got there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got there. Yeah. yeah. And I got there and it was like, it was pretty good. Like the party was good. I met some like cool people like Joel Bergs. He's a really good bloke. He was there. And then like a couple of others who I was like still talk to. Yeah. And then like, um, I woke up the next day cause they'd been like filming like shit on TikTok to post. And then, um, they made like an Aussie hype house tiktok page i was like nah nah (laughs) fuck this and then like what the video that they made was like an intro to like everybody so it was like a three second clip of everyone's face i know how they do that yeah Yeah. and then um it like went like viral on tiktok it got like a couple of hundred thousand views all of the comments were just like who the fuck are these people and then it was like um like a lot of like the top rated comment was petitioned to like end the aussie hype house so me and another bloke that went we were like yeah we agree where do we fucking (laughs) sign it and then like people who were like setting it up like got pissed off at us they were like why are you why are you talking shit about the aussie hype house mate i was like because it's not a fucking thing mate (laughs) why'd they call it so the hype house was that the big one yeah that was like the big one in america and i sort of like around that time because like nobody really talks about like the hype house anymore really yeah so like everybody was trying to hop on like the content creator house train at the same time yeah but it just like didn't really work yeah because it was like a weird group of people like trying to relive like the phase era yeah yeah but it was like it was like a few people who did comedy models um like just public prank people as well like there was a magician there. Like the magician's a really good bloke, but yeah. like he was a part of the mix. So it was just like a weird group of like, it, like the content wasn't really like correlating with everybody. So yeah. it was like a weird mix. Do they still do it? Nah, it was like, <laughs> like I think everybody dipped pretty quickly <laughs> after the hate train came in. This is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Yeah. Blake's turned them on us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Not mates with any of those people anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
I actually watched a Cody Co video and he like reviews all of the the what do you call them like influencer houses I guess yeah I think there's like they have like their own names and shit like I know there's dude there's fucking heaps of them yeah bro. There's I know like, there's called like one's called like the Sway Boys or some shit yeah. like that it's there's, so weird but like dude I'm no shit some of these houses are f- literally insane yeah this guy like did a video in are the, they renting them though f- they fucking sure the rent yeah. would be like more than my house. They probably have money, but yeah, because they TikTokers make money for like per view over Dude. in America. That's how Charlie D'Amelio and that make all their money. What they what? make money yeah. and shit, huh? Yeah, like um, they have like a creator fund over there. So like TikTok America put like I don't know, like five hundred million or something like that. I don't know exactly what the number was, but it was a shit ton. So like, if a video goes super viral, you get paid like zero point something cents per view. And, um, like, yeah, if you make, like, a video that goes super, super viral, you're probably going to make, a, like, a good amount of money out of it. Oh. Yeah, it's, like, the same as Facebook. Like, sort of, like, similar yeah. sort of, like, ad revenue. Ad and all revenue that sort of, and yeah. shit. True. I did not actually know TikTok was, like, li- li- liquidable at all. Yeah, I over know. in America, it's, like, huge. Like, yeah. they're so rich over there if you, like, make it big on TikTok. Yeah, like Addison Ray, she's running around with like the Kardashians and shit now. Yeah, so it's like, all yeah. of them are all hanging out with like yeah. A-listers and shit. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, then there's just fucking the Aussie ones. Yeah. Oh, you might be able to hang out with um making the Aussie hype houses and Anthony Mundine soon or something yeah. like that. Anyway. <laughs> Who knows, I might get on fucking Home and Away in like three <laughs> years or some shit. <laughs> hey, mate. Home and Away's produced some stars, mate. That's I reckon. Some, it actually has. Yeah. Maybe that's Hemsworth. your next... Maybe Home and Away, you get yeah. in the UK, then you... Straight exactly. to the US, baby. Yep. What I kind reckon. of character do you reckon you'd play in Home and Away? I don't know. Ooh. I'll probably get cast as like, I don't know, like the country town racist or something <laughs> like that. I'd get cast as like a really stereotypical, like bogan Aussie character. Yeah, it's like bashes people and shit. Yeah. Like. <laughs> That'd be that good. <laughs> oh, shit. That's actually very funny. No, but like, yeah, if the... Like casting people of Home and Away are watching, like please hit yeah. me up. They definitely are. They're teabaggers. Huge yeah. teabaggers. We tea get baggers. a few. So we have been asked to go on an episode. Yeah, as podcast hosts. Yeah, we said no. <laughs> yeah, we, we turned them down. Yeah, we turned them down. <laughs> that shit. We're too big. Um, how so? How is it being consistent? Is um, that hard? Yeah, it is hard. Like, but I don't know. I think. I think the main thing is just like not to stress yourself out about it. Like if I don't post a video for a couple of days, like I used to get super stressed. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to lose all my followers with this one. But like if you don't post for a couple of days, it's fine. But yeah, you just got to keep, you know, the train rolling as, as fast as you can. But Keep it while the momentum's yeah. hot sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So like I try to post like every one to two days. But like, yeah, if it's like three or four, yeah. like I never try to go any longer than that. But um, But yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, do you get stressed out? Because I kind of understand what you mean with stressed out. I've been super lazy with my business, Instagram and stuff, but I know what you mean. That, yeah. There's like that fear. Do you lose followers if you don't post? Like, um, Do you see numbers drop? I've only really seen numbers drop like once. And that was like when I just like wasn't able to post for some reason for like, I don't know, a week or two. And like you lose like... I don't know, a couple of hundred followers, which is like, it seems big, but like in the scheme of things, you're going to get them back if yep. you start posting again. So it's fine. Yep. So it's like a small step back. But yeah, exactly. It does nothing really in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I lost followers because I like had to go to hospital because my appendix burst. Oh, oh bullshit. Yeah. That's apparently horrible. Yeah. Oh fuck. Worst pain I've ever been in. Yeah. I've yeah. heard that. But um, yeah, I couldn't post for like a week, week and a half. So I lost a couple of hundred followers, but like, yeah, yeah. it was fine. Fuck me. Was that random? Like, did, were you just like sitting there and then just... Yeah, well, I like had a bit of a like pain in the stomach the night before, but I was like, no, nah, I'll just, I'll just sleep through it. And then I woke up and the pain was still there. So I was like, fuck, maybe I need to just take a big shit. <laughs> so, so then I like ended up passing out in the toilet, <laughs> like just, and then I woke up like 10 minutes later. And I was like, fuck, where am I? <laughs> And then I just like ran out to like, cause this is when I was still living at home and like, I just ran out to my dad and I was like, fuck, can you just take me to the emergency room real quick? And then, uh, yeah. Do you wash your hands? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I even took a shit. Like I, I think I just, like, I like pulled on Elvis. I nearly died on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you actually, what'd you, when you passed out, did you fall on the floor? Or were yeah. you like, 
And like my toilet, like back home, my toilet's like a room, like fucking not that big at all. <laughs> so I like hit my head on the wall on the way down and shit like that. So your dad just heard something bang, bang. He's like, nah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> he comes in 10 minutes later with like a fucking black eye. Yeah. Hands down. They're good, mate. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that is actually classic. Feels bad though. That would have yeah. sucked. Oh yeah, it was the worst <laughs> pain I've ever been in. <laughs> oh, it would be. That's the oh. funniest thing I've ever fucking heard, I reckon. The, the bigger you get, do you get more more scared? Because we watched the video yesterday that you can, you're cancelling yourself video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, yeah, so true. Because that's sort of in a way what I sort of fucking worry about that too. Because for some reason, everyone on the internet seems to be like the least forgiving cunt in the universe. Everyone's perfect now. They must be. Yeah. They have to be the way they talk about everyone else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just like so toxic. Like I agree if like... If someone's done, like, some very criminal shit, yeah. like, back in the day, if they're, like, a pedophile, yeah. then good, like, fuck them. But yeah. if someone makes a joke on Twitter, like, 10 years ago, yeah. like, it, that's where I find it to be, like, the biggest, like, load of shit. Like, Kevin Hart getting sacked from the Oscars for doing stand-up jokes, like, pissed me off so much. Did he actually? Yeah, yeah he, like, yeah. did... Fuck, I didn't know that. He, like, did a bit about how he's, like, if his son was gay or something like that, and then people, like, went through his, like, stand-up catalog to just find that and then they sent that to the academy and like yeah ended up getting sacked fuck so i wonder like there's like that was a massive uproar in the comedy scene too yeah and that's when dave Chappelle came back and fucking stuck up for the scene yeah i love dave Chappelle. sticks and stones yeah greatest comedian ever dave Chappelle. i reckon actually is. i reckon he is like the greatest yeah yeah oh, i actually do yeah writes jokes backwards the cunt he actually does yeah <laughs> comes up with the punchlines first Really? Yeah. He's so weird. Like, he'll just, like, rock up and do, like, two hours on stage yeah. with, like, nothing prepared. Yeah. Like, just so good. Out of nowhere, yeah. too. Like, last minute show. Like, the sales yeah. will go on a day before, sell out. Yeah. He'll just come to town, leave town. <sighs> yeah. He's gone. You'd again. just be that good, wouldn't you? You'd just yeah. be so experienced that you're just like, fuck it. Yeah. I know exactly what. Well, he literally, he literally turned down $50 million and said, fuck the fame. I'm moving to Africa. Yeah. That is insane. I just know that. Fuck, I could not do that. I'd sell out to the heart. <laughs> oh. I'm just putting it out there. If someone offers me 50 mil, I'm taking oh. that shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Mate, you, even if you do turn 50 million dollars, like, like Jim Jeffries, what? 50 million. No, $50 million. You would not take $50 million. I, I 100% said I would. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were like, bro, why would you do that? What? Can't, why, uh, yeah, like why wouldn't? Like, oh, you I'd must have that. that much money already. To do that yeah oh, oh yeah. you'd have a bit yeah oh you'd have to be comfortable to turn it down i'm sure if dave yeah. chappelle was still yeah. f fending for scraps yeah and shit, <laughs> yeah he, dave he chappelle be turning... was like a mid-level tiktok star I'm <laughs> sure he'd take it. do you ever get scared like with your uh what do you say your what's that when you have like shit written your fucking like prepared yeah your Material? Fuck. Material. Yeah. Holy shit. That was so hard to think of. With your material, do you, with Cancel Culture, like, because we were talking off air, some stuff that yeah. you said at one of your shows and someone was like, that's really offensive. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, it's mean? like, I would never put, I mean, I would never put like jokes that I do on stage online just because like that'd be dumb if like people came and then like I did the same jokes as I was putting on social media. Yeah. But like, I think if you're doing stuff in a comedy club that comes with like a set of rules, like I can say whatever the fuck I want mm. and like it's in the context of a joke. Yeah. But I just think like if someone gets pissed off about a joke that's been made in a stand-up club, like that's not the comic's fault mm. at all. That's like, that's like something within you to get pissed off at a stand-up show where you've like literally signed up to say these are going to be jokes I'm going to hear for the next yep. hour and a half. They're you're literally there might be it at someone's expense. Yeah. Get the fuck over it. Yeah. And that's what cracks me too. Like everyone's happy to laugh until it's about them. It's yeah. like, all right, well, you laugh the joke about old mate. You laugh the jokes that affects these people. Yeah. But like as soon as it affects you, yeah. uproar. Yeah, exactly. It's the worst joke in the world. Yeah. Yeah, but like as I was saying off air, like my brother is gay, and like I'm a like I've got I'm a Make a Wish kid, so like we go back and forth about that because our humour is quite dark, yeah, and it's nothing mean spirited or anything like that. So I did a joke about that on stage, and then someone came up to me afterwards and was like, "Why would you? Why would you be so homophobic?" I'm like, "It's my fucking brother." Yeah, like I just don't get why people are getting offended on his behalf. Because, yep. like, at the end of the day, like, I would never do a joke without his permission about him. Yeah, that's and right. So, like, that's why I asked him before I did the joke. I was like, is this cool? And he was like, yeah, that's sweet. 
and that's another thing people need to stop doing is being offended for other people. Like, yeah. for instance, yeah, like I'm the same because like my brother's gay too. Yeah. Two blacks, two gay two brothers. Bl- must be a... Anyway. Must be a common denominator <laughs> there. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like literally like, because like we, uh, he's always said shit, like I say shit about, like we've been calling each other fags and stuff from like, fuck, can't even like, yeah. literally knee height basically. And like, he actually ended up becoming one. And I remember really being upset about it one time, like, fuck, did that shit affect you and stuff? And he's like, yeah, nah, like, fucking that's what we'd say like that's yeah. what we say to each other who cares yeah like i've got those passes with like my brother as well to say those words like I've, i'd never say them to someone else who no. like, didn't know like what my story was but mm. like when i'm in like a confined space with him like go yeah. for your life 100 like, he calls me a disabled little fuck <laughs> like and <laughs> and i just clap back at him yeah, yeah. <laughs> no that's good though <laughs> I, I, i've got a dark humor too so it's, yeah yeah Oh, me and my mates are pretty crook, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's what everyone does, though. Like, oh, they just, I, people's sense of humour, like, off social media is just, like, ten times worse than, like, oh, what they're going to put out there. Uh, nearly mine's probably even, even, though, because, like, me and the boys just, like, send the memes to each other. Like, we don't yeah. actually tag each other in them. We're not that dumb. We're like, fuck it. We'll send that. We'll send that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Fuck that. You don't want to get fucking... Oh, yeah. Yeah, if everyone's, like, group chats are leaked, we're all fucked. Yeah. Like... Literally, like dude. we've all done shit that's like cancel worthy. So I don't get why people are like so up and about yeah. about like canceling people because I bet they've done shit that's ten yeah. times worse. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, like if I had Twitter when I was fourteen, I'm done. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Everyone throws stones from their glass houses. I reckon. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, I've got some cringy shit on my Facebook actually. I should be the weirdest. Oh yeah, you do. Oh yeah, when I was like, <laughs> no, just, when I was like, I actually do. when I was like fourteen, fifteen, I fell into like the like watching like Ben Shapiro videos and all that type of shit. Like yeah. I fell down that train because I was like 14 in 2016. So that was like the yeah. peak time to like get grabbed into that. Yep. And looking at my Facebook memories, like now every day it's just like an fucking anti-SJW bullshit yeah. like Facebook post that I have to delete every day. I actually froth has changed my mind though sometimes. They're so I, I, don't, oh, I, yeah. I don't hate Ben Shapiro though. I, like, yeah. I mean Stephen Crowder or whatever. Sorry, I said hey. Stephen Crowder, isn't it? Yeah, that I think he does, yeah. Ben Shapiro is that dude, dude that did that weird. Oh, he's cringy. As, he's cringy as yeah. he has some cooked ideas, but I don't think all of his ideas are cooked. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. How funny is that WAP fucking yeah, review that he's done? done. Cooked this is shit, the, right. I was watching this. I was like, you did not do this. This is not good. <laughs> was that the one where he like basically accidentally admitted to never getting his wife like oh, yeah, horny? I, th- I think so. Yeah. Because <laughs> like every word that she said, he would just like, explain it and be like that's gross or something like yeah. just yeah. weird hours and i was like and it's like bros you need to relax bro yeah it's like so jesus weird. you can tell this dude has not ever had fun in his life yeah <laughs> he's like a failed like he only got into like the stuff he's doing now because he like f- is a failed screenwriter oh really and he's like his dad or like one of his family members is like well connected in the movie industry so if you yeah. can't even get in on like the sheer like basis of nepotism <laughs> like you must know he's pretty fucking shit at screenwriting yeah right yeah. <laughs> Fucking shit. There you go. That's gold. That's actually funny. Oh, uh, So I wanted to get into like a little bit of your content making. We talked about this when we yeah. got here. How is, uh? so you, you don't only have TikTok, you can have YouTube as well. Yeah. 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 YouTube's like a harder like platform. Yeah. To really like grow a following on like, but like. Fucking out of, hard. Yeah. Yours isn't too bad. You've got like 15,000. Yeah. Yeah. 15,000. Um, but I haven't really posted on there in a while just cause I'm like not sure the YouTube game is for me just cause I want my focus to be on stand up and all that sort of stuff. But, um, but like if I do like a good like set with like members of the crowd and shit, I might like film it, chuck it on YouTube. Cause that's like never going to be repeated again. Yep. But um, yeah, YouTube's hard. I just want to see what type of content I really want to delve into on there. Yep. Yeah. Would you say YouTube is... Because if you if you try to get into the YouTube game, you really fucking have to try. Like, yeah. It's so hard now. It's not like 10 years ago when it started. And yeah, like, exactly. There were them big YouTubers that like it was a lot easier to get into. It's fucking... Every second bloke is yep. on YouTube and gal. Yeah. It's such a grind. Such a grind. And yeah. like you have to grind. Like it... it you wouldn't even be earning any money off it and it'd almost be a full-time job. Yeah, exactly. You, know what I mean? you nearly have to branch out on your social medias and then revert back to your YouTube later on. Like, yeah. like I feel like the only people that are like successful will fucking already have like a million followers on this and they're just like, all right, follow my YouTube. Yeah. All right, and bro. even if you want to like promote your YouTube channel on um, TikTok and shit, like if I made a video that was like, hey guys, get around my YouTube channel, 
like TikTok like doesn't like that shit at all. They don't like you trying to like convert an audience because it would obviously take away like viewership from TikTok itself. Yeah. But like out of 650,000 followers, like maybe that video would get like 10,000 views. Fuck. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then out of that 10,000 people, there's like fucking 10 people that go on actually. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They just demonetize. Is that what it's called? Demonetize or like take no. it out of the algorithm. algorithm. Sort yeah. Of. Sort of like if you do anything that's sort of promotional, they would just like kill the video. Yeah. Which is fair enough. Like nobody wants to watch a fucking promotional video. Mm. So yeah, that's yeah. probably why it doesn't get a lot of views. But like, especially in like your following page, it's not going to show up first thing, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, right. There you go. That's interesting. It's funny how they're all all sort of out for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big tech. Fucking love them. Yeah, 100% legends. I kind of wanted to get into a little bit about your CF. Yeah. Which is cystic fibrosis for yep. those uh, playing at home. Um, how is that? For those, can you actually explain what that is for people that actually Yeah, so it's it like basically what it is, it's a genetic and sometimes terminal sort of like lung like respiratory illness that affects sort of like the lungs primarily but also like other areas of like your body basically everything organs and yeah, stuff, yeah pretty much like it also affects like reproductive and all that sort of stuff so yeah i've been living with that basically my whole life yeah first person in my family to actually have it so yeah oh third yeah not nah, first sorry oh, yeah. sorry first. yeah first sorry. yeah because genetic is this like has that stemmed from like Fucking like, do they know who that came from? Yeah, so it basically is, there's like a gene that people have, like and either you carry the gene or you don't carry the gene. Yep. And if two, like if, say, well, my mum and dad both had the gene. So if like two people like have a baby, like there's a chance one of them's going to have CF. So like my brother, like he didn't have it, but like I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So how, is there like different, I, I we listened to your podcast about it and you said you have a, I don't want to say better off, but like, uh, is there variations of CF in terms of like how bad yeah. you have it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And yeah, I am probably better off than like a lot of other people that have it. Like I've been really lucky to, like most people have, like not most people, a lot of people have like a lot of issues with like their lungs primarily um, and just have to go to hospital like 24 seven just for like tune ups and all that sort of stuff. Cause basically what it is, is like, a lot of mucus gets trapped in your airways. So then it makes it like hard to breathe. And then like over time that like increases the risk of like lung infections. And then basically as time gets on, it gets worse, worse off. So yeah. Oh. Would stuff like smoking cigarettes and stuff like that be like fucking horrible? Yeah. 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 That's why like I've never had a cigarette in my life or yeah. anything like that. I haven't had a like puff of a vape or anything like that. Cause it just like. Where did that fuck you? Yeah. yeah. it like, I'm not too sure like how bad it would be be but i wouldn't say to be fucking good yeah yeah <laughs> You're not gonna go trying it nah, no da, da, da. um but um but yeah it's like um like i've had a lot of issues with like my sort of like bowels and like stomach and all that sort of stuff that's been like what i've had to deal with the most compared to like other people who've had to deal with like issues with their lungs and stuff like that so yeah like i'm a lot luckier than a shit ton of other people like i've never been in hospital for like a long long amount of time for like any health related issues yeah yeah you actually have like a very good mindset like on the podcast you you were saying like you've pretty much been born with it yeah um and you literally said you don't you don't like let yourself kind of get down by it because you can't control it you yeah. can't control it yeah you don't let it control you yeah because you can't control it kind of thing and I'm yeah like, Fuck, that's a really good way to look at it actually. yeah well yeah i just think there's nothing i can really do about it other than like just keep consistent with like my treatments and all that sort of stuff but um but yeah just like yeah there is nothing i can do about it so there's no point just like being down in the dumps about it because like what that just achieves nothing at the end of the day like and maybe that's just because i am like a lot better off than a lot of other people like so yeah. i'm basically being able to live a like a pretty normal life in that sense but um but yeah has it ever affected you in like any actual way like negatively i guess like when like life wise and stuff because like restricted you from doing something maybe yeah. like other people besides smoking cigs and stuff yeah like yeah. Course, but like <laughs> yeah and you said there's like because i looked it up and i was like oh 37 years is like the average life expectancy. Yeah. but then i heard your podcast and you said it's like bumped up to 47 years. Yeah, it's years. bumped up, yeah, another Average 10 time. years or so, yeah. Yeah, so is that, that's good though because then you said also said that it might even be higher again. 
Yeah, the so like by the time I get to forty seven, I'd say it'll probably increase. Yeah. yeah, like as like technology advances and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, no, literally. But um, it, <clears throat> I find that like it's like a good thing to like be so positive minded because like some people could be left in the dumps over like such small yeah. things about things and yeah. Sometimes it's people that sort of have it, not necessarily like harder, but like yeah. have different challenges and they like handle them so much better. Which is yeah. Like yeah. Like, um, yeah, I wouldn't say like going back to the, what you said before, it hasn't really affected me in like a huge way in terms of like any specific thing. Like the, probably the worst thing is like, cause a lot of people with CF get like CF related diabetes as well. Oh, so no, that's like, yeah. yeah. So like it's basically um like a, another form of diabetes that's like separate from type one and type two so that's probably been like the most like that's probably been the worst thing that i've had to deal with which like at the end of the day it's just like another thing that's like you know, can't really do anything about it so yeah so yeah and then like with covid i just had to be a lot more careful with it and all that sort of stuff like um True. Yeah. yeah so like like pe- i think we did online school for about like eight or so weeks but i had to stay home for like uh, like 12, 13 weeks, something like that, yeah. So in a way, you're kind of at risk really in like a yeah. pandemic sort of yeah. situation. So yeah, if I get COVID, I'm fucked. But, um, and you yeah. move to the bigger city in yeah, Victoria. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ah, well, if it takes me, it takes me. As long as I can fucking just live it up in Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather die in fucking Melbourne than Corowa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, very good. Um, I think that about almost wraps us up for the night, boys. Fucking earth. Right. Fucking glad to have you on, man. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Fucking no thank you for having us. Oh, yeah. oh good. In the shag pad. <laughs> yeah. The shag pad itself. The bloody payday pussy pad. <laughs> <laughs> the big fellas. <laughs> the big fellas pad. You should actually put the big... You've got stickers and stuff, don't you? Yeah. You should put the big fellas. No, do not... Because that's what people know where you live and shit. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. no that's, that's the line in the club I use when I go up to the latest guy. Do you know why they call me the big fella? <laughs> You do not. You do not. Do you? you should do that. Do you? No. Yeah, you oh, that'd be so <laughs> good. That'd be pure. Oh, that'd you should be actually sick. start doing it now. You should definitely fucking do that and make it a TikTok video. I'll just be like mid sex and all, but just whisper in here. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> How's the big fella, boo? <laughs> do you want about 60 kilos of missionary tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. That's so fucking good. All right, fellas. Uh, yeah, that about wraps us up. Right. Thank you for joining on uh, episode, I believe this is episode 28 of The Tea House. So thank you again, once again, The Teabaggers, and we'll see you next week.